What's going on everyone and welcome to episode one of Everyday Python Projects. Today's project is a Mad Libs generator. So in case you don't know how the game works, you essentially have a story with blanks that you're trying to fill in. Each of those blanks have some kind of a hint, like a noun or an adjective, and you're gonna work your way through the story. At the end of the game, you'll read the story back and you'll have a good laugh depending on what you used for each blank. If you wanna make it a bit more fun, Writing this as a program gives the user the option to avoid seeing the entire story beforehand. That way, you'll have very little context as to what you're filling in, and your answers will be that much more entertaining. All right, let's do it. So the first thing I did was find a sample story on Google Images. I figured this is the easiest way to get started rather than spending too much time coming up with my own story. That's something you all can do at the end once you have uh, this program up and running. So to save some time, I'm going to copy and paste a story and the list of hints and then assign them to their respective variables so that we can refer back to them later on. All right, here it is. Here's the story. These brackets right here are what we're going to fill in and we're going to use these hints to let us know what exactly should be going into each of these brackets. Okay, so this part is important to address. The first time I'm writing a program in Python, my number one priority is the speed at which I can get a working product. After I create something, then I'll go back and clean up parts of the code that are ugly or inefficient. I've found over time that I've made much more progress by writing something that works but is extremely ugly and then going back and fixing it rather than spending hours on the first draft trying to make it perfect and as efficient as possible. This isn't high frequency trading. Our code can be inefficient for the first couple drafts and everything's gonna work out in the end. Alrighty, what we have here are the sentences and hints that will be displayed on your console as the program runs through them. Let's give the user the option to choose if they want to see the story or not. We're going to create a variable called difficulty. And this is going to be an input with the prompt, do you want to see the story first? Type yes or no. Then we're going to make a, a list called choices and this will have two elements, yes and no. Uh, the reason we're doing this is we need to account for the possibility that uh, the user types something other than yes or no, and we don't want our program to break. So to accomplish this, we need to create a while loop. And we're first going to print a statement saying, please choose either yes or no. And this while loop is going to say, uh, while difficulty dot lower, not in choices. All this means is uh, if whatever we typed in isn't one of these, either yes or no, then it's going to execute this code right here. Then we're going to write difficulty again, and it's basically just copy and paste right here. I'll run this again. Do you want to see the story first? Type yes or no. If I type yes, this loop doesn't execute and we can move on to the next part of the program. Uh, so this accomplished two things, you know, first it let us know we made an error. Uh, we didn't pick something in the list called choices and it's making you aware of that. Second, this is giving you the option to write either yes or no uh, to choose if you want to see the story or not. Uh, so until you pick one of those two choices, this loop is going to continue running indefinitely. Next, we're going to write the code that does something based on your choice to see the story or not. All right, so first, we're going to have an if statement, if difficulty dot lower is equal to yes. I'll put a little comment here, show the story without anything filled in. Uh, print a new line, and then we're going to print the story, and we're going to format it with star hint list. Uh, this is a really easy way to basically pass in all of these elements of this list hint list into each of these brackets right here. Now let's say if they chose no, else if difficulty 
dot lower is equal to no, then just pass. So if you choose that you don't want to see the rest of the story, uh, it'll just move on to the rest of to the rest of the program. Uh, there should be two equals right here. This should say show the story uh, with everything filled in. All right, so let's test this out. Do you want to see the story? Uh, type yes or no. Yes, and you can see there are many adjective adjective ways to choose a noun noun so on and so forth each of these are filled in into the story so you can get a better understanding of you know what's actually going on here all right let's see what's next we're going to have to create a placeholder uh, for each of our inputs so that uh, we can print them out at the end of the story so let's write a comment create your inputs we're going to print a new line. Uh, the reason I keep doing this is that everything's happening over here. So we don't want all of our lines to be jumbled up on top of each other. It just makes it easier to read. Next, we're going to create a list called input list. Uh, this is going to be empty for now, but it's going to have all of our inputs um, and it'll print it out at the end of the program. All right. So in order to do this, we need to, we need to create a for loop. So for x in range length hint list. Oops. Uh, okay, your answer is going to be an input and it's gonna say, give me the following and we're going to pass in the uh, first hint. Then whatever we type in for your answer, we're going to input it or we're going to append it into uh, input list. Then we're going to print a new line um, and we're going to continue until we go through each of these hints uh, and it'll record each of our answers. So let's test this out. Do you want to see the story? Let's just say no. All right, give me the following. An adjective, let's say um, nice. Give me a noun, say president, plural noun, uh, chickens doesn't matter could be anything and so on and so forth so let's just put in random inputs just to let this finish all right now if we look at input list we can see that it has all of everything that we put in here see nice president chickens d d d d d so it's recording everything that we're inputting and it's going to use that to fill this in uh at the end so once this loop is completed, we have all of our answers. Now we just need to display the story um, with our answers to get the final story that we created ourselves. So let's create, or let's write print the final story. And we're gonna write print, here is your final story. And then just like we did earlier, we're gonna write print story dot format asterisk input list. All right, so we have uh, everything set up. Let's try and test this out. Do I wanna see the story first? Let's type yes or no, type yes. All right, give me the following, uh, an adjective, nice. Uh, noun, chicken, plural noun, chickens. Uh, person in room, next, that's me. Uh, adjective, mean, article of clothing, shirt. Another noun, chair. City, say Chicago, plural noun, donkeys. Another adjective, gray, part of the body, arm. Letter of the alphabet. W, celebrity, uh, Michael Jordan, plural noun, basketballs, adjective, baller, uh, place, Los Angeles, 
another part of the body. Uh, let's go with leg this time. Okay, and here's our final story. There are many nice ways to choose a chicken to read. First, you could ask for recommendations from your friends and chickens. Uh, just don't ask Aunt Max. She only reads mean books with shirt-ripping goddesses on the cover. If your friends and family are no help, try checking out the chair review in the Chicago Times. Uh, if the donkeys featured there, <laughs> if the donkeys featured there are too gray for your taste, try something a little more low arm like W, the Michael Jordan magazine, or Basketball's magazine. You can also choose a book the baller fashioned way. So head to your local library or Los Angeles and browse the shelves until something catches your leg. Yeah, clearly that makes a ton of sense. Congrats, you made it through episode one of Everyday Python Projects. If you like the video, hit subscribe, drop a like below, and join me tomorrow for another Python programming tutorial. 